In today's video, I'm gonna be showing y'all how to fix all these O2 sensor codes in only five minutes. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. So as you guys can see, I have codes for all four of my O2 sensors right now. And it's basically saying that the heater control circuit is low. So all four of my O2 sensors being faulty at the same time is highly unlikely. So I basically traced it down to a wiring or a fuse issue and I found my problem. So first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is pop the hood. Now we're gonna take our key out of the ignition. We're gonna disconnect the battery with a 10 millimeter socket and we'll wrap up the terminal, put it off to the side just like that. Sweet, so now I'm gonna show you guys what the problem is and it's such an easy fix. So first thing it is, I took off my cabin air filter and all the little plastic trim pieces put that off in the back of the car. And what we're gonna do is access the fuse box here under the hood. So we're gonna go ahead and push up here and here while squeezing in, freeing up that side right here. And now we're gonna go ahead and hit the unlock switch here by sliding this over to the left. We have one in the back right here. And now let's go ahead and pull off this cover. Bam, put this carefully very carefully put that off to the side. So now here we are under the engine fuse box and our issue is gonna be right here in this connector. But we already went ahead and unplugged the battery. Make sure that's the first thing you do. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull this up. It might be held on by the little tab clip over here. So now looking at this harness, what we wanna do is take off this top portion. This whole top portion here disconnects from the rest of the housing. There's gonna be a clip here on this side, but the clip actually broke off. So we're just gonna basically Pull this thing out of place. And you wanna hold the bottom, support the bottom while you pull off the top. And it'll take some force and some wiggling, but it'll slide out of place just like that. Inside of this is gonna hold five fuses. We're gonna have four 30 amp ones and one 20 amp in the middle. And now what you wanna do is this whole top part slides off like a lid. So we're gonna flip it over and you're gonna see these little push tabs. If you guys can see the little square holes right over here, there are these tiny little square holes right there on the side. And there's a tiny little tab in there you're gonna depress to go ahead and slide this back. So what I did was got a very, very, very tiny flathead screwdriver and was able to pull those apart. And once you depress those little square tabs, you can go ahead and slide this portion off just like that. Inside of here is gonna be four 30 amp fuses and a 20 amp in the middle. And now looking at it like this, the second one from the bottom, there's the bottom one where my thumb is, the second one right there, that's gonna be the issue. That is gonna be what supplies power to all of the heating elements, to all of your O2 sensors at the same time. So we're gonna go ahead, pull out that fuse. And just to show you one more time, it's the second one from the bottom, like I said. Go ahead and put these off to the side. And now there is the issue, guys. Look at that blown fuse right there. This is what supplies power to all of the heating elements, to all of your O2 sensors at the same time time. And you can see clear as day, it is blown in the middle. Now what I want you to take note of is if this thing is blown, it could have just happened by chance, but you could have a bad ground somewhere. You could have a frayed cable that's touching the chassis of the car and cause this thing to blow. I know I've replaced my O2 sensor harness in the past and had to do some splicing. And because of that, I'm 100% sure that's why this thing is blown to bits, but we're gonna go ahead and replace this thing. And here I have some 30 amp fuses, link down below where you can get yours for the best price. And what I did was I got fuses that were a different color, just so I would know in the future if this happens again, exactly which fuse it is a lot quicker. And we're simply just gonna drop it into place just like that. And now from here, we can go ahead and throw the lid back on and reinstall this back to our fuse box. And I'd say while you already have this removed, go ahead and check all the other fuses and make sure nothing else is blown. Now we're gonna slide the little lid back on, make sure it snaps into place, makes an audible little pop. And now from here, we can go ahead and just re-stick this back in and connect that harness. So just like that, we'll slide it back in and make sure this thing's oriented the right way. You shouldn't have to force it into place. You do not wanna bend the little end pieces, the little crimps on the end, because those will be an absolute pain to replace. Just make sure you line it up and everything should install pretty smoothly with just a nice little, maybe a nice little push into place. And it will make an audible clicking noise. Already did. Nice, we'll make sure that that's secure. And we'll tuck this right back in the little area that it came from. And there's actually a little part here that it connects to and clips into just like that. And now before we put this cover back on and put everything back into place, we're gonna go ahead and put power onto the vehicle to make sure that our codes went away. Sweet, so our battery's reconnected, good to go. Go ahead, pop our key back into the ignition, turn on the electronics. From here, we're gonna go ahead and clear off all of our codes that were pre-existing from before this repair. Now, the only code I expect to stay there is this P 
116E because I do have a tiny little vacuum leak somewhere under the engine bay, but all of these other O2 codes should completely erase out. So let's go ahead, hit erase. Yes, erase is done. Cool, no faults. So now let's go ahead and turn the car on. And nothing crazy's came up on the dash yet. We're gonna go ahead and let this idle out and then we'll recheck for some codes here in a couple minutes. Now it's been a couple minutes. Let's go ahead and turn the car off. Take the key out and then we're gonna reset, put everything back in, turn the electronics on. And now we're gonna go back to our OBD2 and rescan for everything. And now look at that guys, codes found zero. All of our codes went away after that fix. It turns out the only thing wrong was that bad fuse under the engine bay. And it was basically causing all the O2 sensors to not be able to heat up properly. In five minutes with $5, we basically cleared out five check engine codes. So I'd say that's a pretty dang good ratio. So nice. That is a good fix to me. Now from here, we can go ahead and slap this cover right back on. Super simple, it's gonna fit right over the top. We're gonna push down these two clips here and then we attach our clamp there in the back and then we're gonna lock it in the rear. And now we can go ahead and put all of our other covers, our cabin air filter, right back on. And just like that, everything is completely reinstalled. All of our codes are cleared out. We put all of our plastic trim pieces, our cabin air filter, et cetera, back on. Well guys, that is how you fix all five of your O2 sensor codes for five bucks in five minutes. If you found this video helpful, go and smash that thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions at all. I have links for everything I use down below. And as always, love y'all and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace out.